This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. For a while now, I've noticed that the way that I hold my mouse has been severely limiting my aim. Or maybe I'm just bad. I don't know. Nope. What? Huh? Huh? What? I got away. Regardless, I usually rest the palm of my hand on the back of my mouse just because I find it a little more comfortable. But the problem is that when I do that, it digs the mouse into the mouse pad, which causes a lot of friction. And if you're a keyboard and mouse player, you already know that friction is a big no-no. That's why I was hyped when I saw this video by Optimum. The fingertip design of his mouse would be perfect for forcefully training me to hold my mouse better. In his video, he mentions that he's selling his mouse as a mod kit for the Razer Viper V2 Pro. In fact, in a later video, he actually said that he's going to be partnering with Final Mouse to make it into a full product that you can purchase by the end of this year, which I think is going to be awesome. Seriously, if you haven't followed Optimum's videos about his Zero Mouse, I urge you to check them out. I'm going to leave a link to his channel down in the description below. But what would this channel be if I just went and bought a ready-made product? Plus, I'm cheap and I don't want to spend $100 on the Razer mouse plus the additional $70 for the kit. That's why I was inspired to design my own budget fingertip mouse, only costing me $30. I call it the Zero Mouse. Bruh. Yeah, I probably could have come up with a better name. I'll get to why there's an H in there in just one moment. The first thing I needed to do was to source a donor mouse for the project. I immediately started toying around with this Logitech 502 that I had sitting around, but there was a lot of things that stopped me from using it. Mostly the weight of the scroll wheel assembly, and since I love having my scroll wheel, leaving it out was just not an option for me. I also kind of wanted the mouse to be wireless, so I went on Amazon and I immediately found the Logitech 305 Lightspeed wireless mouse, which I think would be perfect for this project because I've used one in the past and it's a pretty good mouse. But it does have one downside, and that's that it takes a AA battery. But I think I have an idea to solve that. Oh, and the 305 Lightspeed uses Logitech's awesome hero sensor, which is my personal favorite mouse sensor to date. And that's how I came up with the name. Yeah, I, it's not very creative, I know, but it is what it is. It's called the Z-Hero Mouse. Deal with it. <laughs> ba -da 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 -da. It's the copyright-friendly parody. If we're being entirely honest, the main reason I went with this mouse was simply for the price, because I mean, at $35, you're honestly not going to find much else that's better. I think there definitely would have been a better mouse more suited for this project, but for $35, I think I'm just going to put in some extra effort and make it work. Weighing in at a hefty 97 grams, this isn't exactly a particularly light mouse, but at least it isn't nearly as heavy as the Chunky 502 that I was planning on using originally. But obviously once it's stripped down, I'd imagine it's going to be quite a bit lighter. As I didn't want to spend any more money on this project, I want to try and preserve the original skates by heating up the adhesive with a heat gun. Now to just remove every screw that I see, and I'm going to be sure to save these screws because I'm going to be using them in the 3D printed ink. The 305 uses a pretty unique mouse button setup, which has the left and right click switches mounted on the shell rather than soldered directly to the board. I'll have to get creative later on when designing the new shell. Once everything was disassembled, I moved on to designing my custom enclosure. And after a lot of prototyping, I finally found one I'm happy with. Originally, this mouse uses a heavy AA battery, which just isn't going to work for this build. So I designed and printed this AAA battery sled that uses the original terminals from the AA sled. Unfortunately, there was one problem. The DPI switch gets in the way of the battery sled that I designed, so it has to go. That's okay, you can still change the DPI in the Logitech software, and I don't ever really change my DPI once it's set, so this isn't an issue for me. This next part isn't exactly necessary, but I decided I wanted to trim down all of the wires for a cleaner look. My solution to the left and right mouse button problem was to design these little spacers that use the original screws to hold the switches on the board.
Finally, after all my hard work, it's finally time to see my abomination come to life. <laughs> Assembly is as simple as sliding the mainboard into the enclosure along with the battery sled and tightening down the three screws. Although this project is entirely possible using a desktop grade 3D printer, I want to give a huge shout out to my friends at PCBWay for letting me try out their SLS 3D printing service. Not only does this enclosure look and feel way better than the PLA version I printed earlier, but being SLS printed in nylon material, it's going to be stronger and lighter. PCBWay makes ordering 3D printed parts a breeze. Simply upload your model, select the material and color you'd like to use, and submit the request. I received my order in about two weeks and the fit was perfect straight out of the box. Be sure to check out PCBWay in the link down in the description below. I've spent over a month using this mouse since completing the build, and I have to say I really like it. I no longer dig my mouse into the desk, and I feel that my aim is slightly improved in the short amount of time that I've had with it. It definitely isn't as light as a zero mouse, but that wasn't exactly the point of this build. The main reason I wanted to do this build was to force myself to learn fingertip grit. And for that, it actually worked pretty well. Plus, compared to the G Pro wireless that I was using before, it's as light as a feather. That being said, I still suck. Bro! I feel that once I perfect this new fingertip grip, I'll start improving a lot faster if I put in some practice. If you want to try this mouse out for yourself, I'm going to be leaving all the STL files free to download in the description and you can print it yourself. I'm also going to be leaving a link to where you can buy the mouse on Amazon. And if you don't have a 3D printer, don't worry, you can still try this out yourself by using PCBWay's 3D printing service linked down in the description below. Before I end the video, there is one more important thing that I wanted to mention. I initially started using this mouse with an Energizer rechargeable AAA battery not realizing how much it weighed. It turns out this lithium battery is much lighter and makes the mouse feel a lot more balanced. I'm going to be leaving a link down in the description below to where you can purchase a pack of these batteries. I definitely recommend them because they last a lot longer than alkaline batteries and they're way lighter than the rechargeables. But with that being said, I wanted to thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and if you liked the video be sure to hit that button. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. And if you have any suggestions for me or maybe you think I should have done something differently, let me know down in the comments below. And with that, I hope to see you all in the next one. Later.